Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager with Autodesk. For this small tips and tricks on 3ds Max design, I want to help you add some interest into your camera view by adding roll for your still images and camera animations. Camera roll rotates the camera around its horizontal axis. Now in 3D, we are not limited by the physicality of the scene or having to deal with a tripod. So basically, you can create every possible camera animation, including roll angle, which I'm going to talk about in this tips and tricks. In this video, you see different camera animation using the roll angle. Adding camera roll might be something that you want to consider for your next project, and it is really easy to add for both stills and animations. From my scene here, I have created a variety of different camera. Some do use a roll angle and some are dead on straight like regular camera. So let's see how I can easily add a roll angle to my still images. So first of all, I'm going to have a look at this camera by selecting this camera view. And first of all, you're going to maybe think that you would find the roll angle under the control panel. But in fact, the roll angle will be fine in the move uh, transform type in window, which you can right click on the move transform icon and you will find at the bottom of the menu, the roll uh, entry. So you can basically roll whichever way you want while using either a minus angle or a plus angle and you can choose the angle that you want and this is automatically added to your camera. So that's how easy it is to add it to a still image. You basically only have to add a roll amount to roll the camera on its horizontal axis. Now important to keep in mind that you can actually animate the roll angle of your camera. So the roll angle doesn't have to stay constant towards the whole animation. The value can actually be animated. And I do have an example of this type of camera here in my scene. So if I select the camera itself, you'll notice that as I am moving in time, the roll angle changes. Uh, it starts at minus 17. And as I am moving, the roll angle diminishes towards the end of the animation. So if I look at the curve editor, you'll see that this roll angle was actually keyframed. So with the camera selected, I look at what has been animated. So you see the camera is animated on X, Y, Z position as well as on the roll angle. So there's also a keyframe animation for the roll angle. So let me walk you through these steps on adding a camera roll to your animation. My preference is normally to choose a perspective angle that I like. And from the perspective view, a create a camera. So camera, create camera from view, and this will drop me a camera exactly in there uh, to replace that perspective view. So now I am under camera view, and now I can readjust this camera, including adding a roll angle, which I will do uh, using the type in um, move in transform. So now that I'm happy with my camera, let's pretend that this is the start of my animation and I want to keyframe this roll angle. So what I will do is I will select my camera, open the curve editor. So curve editor. So you'll see the action of adding the keyframe here. And you'll see that I have my camera selected and I can keyframe pretty much everything from there. So I'm going to make sure that I have my camera selected. I'm going to add a keyframe. So it's going to add a keyframe to the X, Y, Z, as well as the roll angle. And to make sure that I have that, uh, you see it in the curve editor. And if I select the camera, uh, the roll angle, you'll see that a keyframe has been added. You can always add one manually um, if you're um, not sure if the uh, keyframe was added or not. Then I'm going to turn on auto key to make sure that every other move uh, will be uh, recorded. And I'm going to move in my time at maybe 120 frame. So a few seconds later, if I'm uh, 30 frames per second, and then I'm going to choose a different camera angle using my camera move uh, control. And I'm going to change the camera roll to be a different angle. So maybe a little less of a roll. And I'm going to adjust my uh, last, if you want, camera position. And you notice that in the curve editor, there is a path now that's been traced in between my initial points and my final points 
Um, so it's interpolating the keyframe in between. Once you're satisfied with the final position of your camera, make sure that you turn off auto key so you're not keying anything else in your scene by mistake. And if I focus on a curve editor, you'll notice that an interpolation using an ease in and out has been created in between the initial position and the end position on the X, Y, Z, as well as the roll angle. So focusing only on the roll angle, the ease in and out was created with a Bezier curve. Now you can interpolate the uh, roll angle in a straight line, which I normally prefer. I don't enjoy the ease in and out that was created automatically. So I'm going to change that into straight interpolation. And you could do the same for the X, Y, Z position if you like to. To help you understand the interpolation a little bit better, I'm going to move to a four pane view. And I'm going to look at a top view and a front view, still with my camera selected. So with my camera selected, I'm going to right click to open the object properties. And from the object properties menu, if you click to display by object, you can actually check in the trajectory display. And now you see uh, the actual motion on the X, Y of the camera itself. You can also do the same for the camera target display by object and show trajectory. And now you have somewhat of a visual reference of this motion of the camera and the camera target itself. Now the camera trajectory will be displayed in the top or front view. Now, if you go back to the curve editor and you look actually at the X, Y, Z position of the camera, you will notice that as I am adjusting the Bezier curve of this particular uh, Z action, for example, here, I'm going to select a keyframe and adjust the Bezier curve. You will see the impact in the viewport being displayed in the trajectory. So the trajectory curve is actually changing and the changing the XYZ Bezier curve will impact how this camera is moving. So you can actually adjust the camera animation path or the trajectory while using the XYZ Bezier curve editor. Um, you can interpolate it in a straight line or readjust the X, Y, Z manually or independently if you want to uh, while using the curve editor. Now for the interpolation difference in between the ease in, which is a Bezier curve and a straight line, you'll notice that if I zoom closer, you'll see the little white dot on the trajectory and these represent the frame in your animation. So we have 120 frame. If I use a straight interpolation, the distance between these little dots is actually equal, so there's no ease in or out. But if I use a Bezier curve, you will notice that the distance between the dots becomes really close, so there's more frame towards the end of the animation, and that creates the ease in uh, towards the end of the animation. So that's kind of how you are using the curve editor and the interpolation in between the ease in, which is a Bezier curve, or or a straight line, which is uh, uh, keeping the actual speed in between uh, interpolation in between the uh, point A and point B. Next, you can render a preview animation, so a viewport type uh, previous animation. So go to Tools, Preview, uh, Create preview animation and here we're going to render the active time segment but we only have 120 frame in our animation so we're going to reduce that to the exact number we're going to render a frame per second play back at 30 frame per second 50 percent size so it goes a bit quicker to render so it'll be a smaller now the rendering level um, refers to how the viewport is set so you can render it in line or flat color so basically you have the same options here in the viewports. This is exactly how you would see the animation. So you can choose it in line if you want, clay, you know, uh, all sorts of different uh, preview. Um, if you look at consistent color is normally the one that I prefer going for because it gives you some sort of information uh, a little bit more clear on, in terms of color. So I'm going to choose this particular style. I'm going to go back to tools, preview, create preview animation, and I'm going to uh, finalize my settings. So 120 frame, 30 frame per second, 50 is the size. I'm not going to render all of these extra uh, display filter, only the geometry. 
I'm going to render at 50%. I'm going to choose consistent color. Um, I'm going to also choose a custom file. So I normally prefer rendering a, a movie file. So QuickTime if you want. So .mov, that's the format that I normally choose. And I normally, uh, I'm going to save that as camera roll uh, test one, for example. Normally, I'll render a few tests until I'm satisfied with the result. I normally save that in a preview folder. I'm going to save it. And in the preset here, the compression type, I'm going to use H264. That's my preferred type. And I'm going to crank it up to a medium of um, compression. And, and once I click OK, it's going to start render. And you'll see that the rendering is quite fast. That's why I like preview rendering. Uh, and it's going to give you a uh, actual time playback. So real time playback once it's fully rendered. And it gives you a really good uh, idea of what your animation looks like. So I highly recommend that you render a preview animation the preview animation will allow you to fine tune your camera movements, the speed, the ease in and out, and really see what your camera animation will be before having to render the full quality animation, which can take you uh, quite a bit more time than rendering a quick preview animation. This is also a quick way to get a uh, sign off from your clients to make sure that they understand. You could also use that in a storyboard uh, to start compositing the story that you're trying to tell. And once the preview animation is fully rendered, it will pop up automatically and you can it play and look at it. So it'll basically play in real time at 30 frame per second and give you a really good uh, information about the camera movement that you've just created in real time. So very good tool and here I see my camera roll that was animated and if I'm satisfied with that I can go ahead, if I'm not I can fine tune and re-render another preview animation.